Please note, this session is being recorded. Yeah. So, we covered cross table here, then heat map, pie charts, bar by profit. So, we put profit on the size. So, that's why you can see the different, different width of each bar. Okay. We have area chart, dual axis chart, candles, okay, donut. So, called uh, lollipop. Uh, lo lollipop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then donut chart, mm -hmm. dynamic measures wherein we can change measures and dimensions, mm -hmm. right? Then forecast using sales. Mm -hmm. Then this was the action chart, yeah. Wherein, right? Then top versus bottom. So basically, it was a dynamic, you know using parameters we can give user flexibility wherein if i put 10 into this year i'll be able to see top 10 and bottom 10 states by profit so this, or sales this is using parameter and sets right yeah okay i hope you know it right yeah, yeah i know this so then, you create two different set you create one parameter and two different set you set one uh, set for top another set for bottom and then you combine them right right correct yeah then over here we have a map so this map basically we used a map word map server so it's not this is not the default map available in tableau hmm. we have used uh, uh, Darshan, you also, I mean, in case you have a question or you want to discuss, you can pitch in, right? So, uh, using word map server, we kind of integrated one map here, and mm -hmm. then we are showing that, right? So, it's not a default map available in W. It's a separate okay. one. Okay. And over here also, you can see, um, like, we have, I think it's sale what we have, sales what we have taken. And we can show how the sales have been moving in different states as we go on the go by the order date. Okay. Then this was current versus previous, so we have already covered it there. Yes, yes. Right. Then histogram. Right. So in histogram, histogram basically bins. Correct using bins we can create histogram Pareto chart we have not covered there but i believe uh, it should be simple right any no, idea I... about Pareto chart no no never okay fine so we can cover it and then groups was the next con concept what we covered right so over here group nothing i mean but we kind of you know combine several subcategories into one group so mm -hmm. over here lower uh, the categories with the low profit we combine them into one and we show in it here so right? you combine them manually or you combine with some rule no we just uh, manually i mean by select by selecting the uh, categories which have the list profit we just combine okay. them into the group okay. right then of course on our dashboard we were trying to show this Pareto versus group so basically on dashboard we have one parameter and basis that we can switch between Pareto and group okay. right so we have covered the, these many things so far Mm -hmm. uh, even this thing co was covered for me, but uh, I still yeah. have some confusion or probably one another refresher would require. Okay, so I think we can cover it right now, right? What do you say, Darshan? Hello? It's okay, okay, we can proceed. It will be revision. Okay, fine. 
so uh yep i'll just take few minutes so anu for this particular pareto first of all uh what we did uh okay before before i even go there uh do we know like what is the use of this chart no or or in what scenarios generally it is created okay you must have heard about 8020 rule 8020 no okay so actually this is a tool which is used in the quality process processes right uh, any quality process will have a, this tool this is one of the important tools and uh, this tool is generally used for prioritization of task right like mm-hmm. which task we need to focus on on priority basis so in terms of quality it is focused uh, i mean it is said that if you focus on top 20% errors right your remaining 80% errors can be fixed automatically okay right that is the rule what uh, is kind of not only in quality i mean in even any business you see this rule is being followed right if you focus on your top 20% you know profit generating customers right your business will sustain it's like that so focus on top 20 remaining you can handle so that is what is being said so keeping that thing only in mind so the 20 here i mean 80 20 right 20 that can vary process to process and uh, you know business to business so for that only like we create a cumulative trend here that is just show that shows the you know percentage right now let's say if you start from here uh, it's i'm talking about trend only so it starts from here if i say 20% my 20% will be only the first bar california right 19.92 yes so you can put your cursor anywhere on that particular pointer if you just focus on these two you can add right what it will be um 19 13 7 6 5 and 3 and 3 right so uh, as per quality rule you should focus like this right it this percentage can be anything businesses mm-hmm. business says like i will focus only on these things so that my business will sustain and remaining things you need to see uh, simultaneously right but this will be your focus so like you are deciding your priority okay right so this is a reporting tool as well as prioritization tool because you have both the supporting element when you have you know the profit that supports that these are the um, businesses or these are the states right here which are doing good if you keep working in these states your business will sustain because this covers you know almost if you see around 40 to 50% in the current moment also right yes. remaining other states though they are you know uh, around 70 60 to 70% but they have very less profit right if let's mm-hmm. say i only start focusing on this where i mean i know like i don't know what are the xyz reason because of which there is a very less profit right if i just fo- start focusing on this and forget about these high performing ones uh, it might be possible that my business will suffer mm. right so your focus should always be on the high performing ones but yes simultaneously you need to start working on these as well right or you focus on these only and see that what are the still opportunities there maybe the same opportunities can help you in these businesses right okay. the focusing on this will make sure that your business will not survive it will run properly hmm. right your business will sustain it will run properly and others you can focus slowly but this should be your priority so it's like that got it okay now how we created it so first of all let me go to new sheet over here we can i mean if you want to create it by profit or if you want to create it by sales whichever measure take that on dual axis by rank
Darshan, I think we created one more. Uh, okay, yeah, that's here. Fine. It's profit. And then we can convert this into dual access chart. And then one, okay, we'll take order date or ship date, any particular date in the columns. Sorry, it was by state, not the order date. Pareto, yeah, states. So we'll take states. And then we can con uh, first of all sort this data, right? So descending order, we have sorted it. Now for one chart, we'll take it as bars and others we can take it as trend. So basically it will be not be a trend, it will be a cumulative sum. So I'll convert this into line chart and then I'll convert this into cumulative sum. Cumulative sum means running total. For that, I'll select this excess once again and drag that profit onto labels. Or let's say to here only go to edit calculation, add table calculation, and then we can convert this into running total like this. Yeah. And then I will change this into percentage. So I'll drag the same profit, sum of profit onto labels. And over here, right now you can see these numbers, right? I'll be converting that into percentage. So we'll say, edit table calculation and here we'll show sum of total percentage sorry a percentage of total so that's how you can see that we have just converted i think today we have created by profit it must be with sales yesterday what we created and then you know it depends like what color you want to give so that colors and all you can change right? okay so, so we have to make it twice once uh... We have to make a running total and then drag it into label and make it a percentage of total. Right. See, two things are there. First of all, you have a bar chart. Hmm. Right. On this particular line chart, you have two things. One is a table calculation for cumulative sum running total. Hmm. So it's a running total and the labels I have converted into percentage. Got it. But even for right. uh, changing it to percentage, uh, you are you're not just changing the percentage as a as a format. You are changing it as a percentage of total. Right. Okay. So there are two table calculations. Mm -hmm. One is the running total, and another one is the percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this chart is generally called as Pareto chart. Go now, on. now there was one more thing what we created yesterday. So let me just frame a problem statement for you and then we can go back to that. So our problem, I mean, I was working with Darshan, then the problem what we came across is, let's say if I drag, um, where is region? Yeah, let's say this is my region and then I take state. Yeah. and maybe profit over here so if I ask you that I want top five states by region by profit what would be the best thing to achieve that how can I get top five states by region in terms of profit
you can create sets for top 5 sets for top 5 first create you a parameter know. for uh, top n yeah just a minute and yeah you need to guide me right i'll create whatever you will say i'll go ahead and create so you are saying first of all a parameter hmm. and we'll call it top 5 top then integer integer yes range no, or list all 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 okay fine yes what's next now go to uh, create a set on create. what you want state wise right yeah i want top five states okay go to states create a set You mean no on the dimension shelf you'll have huh. mm -hmm. mm. you can just set top uh, by field mm -hmm. uh, here in ten select the parameter top five now you want it by profit or what? Yeah. No, by profit only. Okay, uh, you can select okay. Right. Now you drag it into view and show members. Okay, so I can remove this state and drag this here, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Mm. I believe. Make it uh, I believe. member. Okay, show members in the set. Change it to five. Mm -hmm. But it is showing uh, overall, not per region, right? You want yes. it per region. Yeah, I want it per region. Mm. You can use a uh, change uh, parameters option here. Uh, parameters I, option. Yeah, change a parameter. Uh, there's an action change parameter i am not sure exactly that will work or not but if i am on particular uh, region uh, mm -hmm. top 5 uh, uh, top 5 states from that particular region will be show for that we have to actually create two views in one view it is not possible in one view it is not i mean uh, can you explain what you are talking about two views okay so i'll create one view for region mm -hmm. I'll have region and uh, profit and then I'll create another uh, view for uh, state and uh, profit. Okay, I got it. So you are saying in dashboard, we can have two views. One sheet will have regions by profit and then in other view, we can have states by profit. So whatever region I select, I can see the related states in the another view. And exactly. over there, you can apply top five filters. Hmm. So whatever region i select automatically i'll be getting the top five states related to that yes right hmm. yes that is also possible right but not in one view okay yeah that's not a one view so that's a kind of limit in this approach what you're talking about right so dashboards we have not created uh, covered yet so i'll skip that portion right now we'll go back to what we created right okay. so that is possible in one view with help of rank by using rank the way we do it in sql server also we can achieve that view here in tableau hmm. right so what it will do it will simply kind of show different different ranks i mean basically what it will do it will rank all the states in each region 
and from there we can filter top five. Okay. Okay. So we created this view. Yeah, right here. So you can see in each region you have top five states, and all others will be kind of filtered out. Right? How can we achieve this view? That is what I can discover in next five minutes. Mm. So keeping this sheet here, what we were working on, right? Um, let me remove this set. Definitely by using parameter and set, we can make it more robust than what we have here. This, right? It doesn't have dynamic rank and all. We can create more dynamic by using parameter and set. But I'm not going there right now. Mm -hmm. I'll only show region, states, and profit. And uh, the thing which I was talking about, rank, right? So we need to create a rank field, basically. So I'll just show you create calculated field. I'll call it rank 2 because I already have a rank field. And over here, rank is a function which you can apply on aggregation, aggregated fields, right? Basis on aggregation field, you can rank things. So we'll say rank. I want rank to be. Dense rank? No, no, no. We'll use simple rank, right? So rank, then sum of my profit. and that too in descending order because i want first of all um, one rank to be given to the highest profit mm. right now as soon as we return this formula i can get this notification which says default table calculation mm. right i explained this to darshan yesterday but uh, I would like to know from you also if it is a table calculation how will it be different than other fields here or what is the use of table calculations use i mean we have already used a lot but again yes how the table calculation is different than our you know calculated fields or other measures no so table calculation uh, it has some defined uh, things so on particular scenario that uh, the world water table calculation options or features they have developed it will work but if you want to make certain changes we can use those function and uh, change it as per our requirement with uh, calculated field right so basically your data your data will not change that calculation what you are making uh, change in that would be limited to your view right hmm. that visualization which you are creating right because of that calculation your data will not have any impact actual data which means these fields hmm. so yes that's true so i'll just say okay here and i'll drag this rank field onto our visualization right now Okay, let me drag it, then I'll talk about other aspect. So right now, as soon as I have dragged it, you might see it comes as green, right? But rank is generally used as a, uh, you can say positions, right? Rank mm -hmm. one, rank two, rank three. You cannot no, aggregate those things. You can't aggregate, yeah, true. Right, so I need to convert this into discrete, first of all, before bringing into visualization. I'll convert this into discrete and then I'll bring it here so you can see rank 4 6 9 12 16 18 whatever it is coming right now fine but it now, is ranking across uh, state not uh, yeah, on context right, to region right right it's ranking on overall data at this moment so like one is here two will be somewhere else right but these things are not repeating right now mm -hmm. i mean none of the rank will be repeated at this moment mm 
if i have 50 states i will see 50 numbers in this column right now hmm. okay but because because it's a table calculation you can see this triangle icon also here hmm. we can do some manipulation and we'll go ahead and see that how can we do it right okay. so we'll just right click over here we'll say edit table calculation see other fields if you're dragging you will get add table calculation for example add table calculation hmm. but over here by default you are getting edit table calculation hmm. okay we'll go ahead and edit it so over here if you see my table down is selected here and other options are there fine but i'll go ahead and do the specific dimension right because the calculation i want to limit on specific dimensions what are those dimensions our region and state what we have dragged here and i want my deepest level to be the state because i want to rank states on what level every region level got it i want to rank states on each region level so mm -hmm. that's why restarting every region so ranking of states will start every region and that is what is happening now okay okay each region is starting one each region is starting one understood fine now we'll just say okay and then the next thing i will drag rank onto filters right mm -hmm. why i asked the table calculation question at that moment because if by mistake you are going to dra uh, drag this rank field onto filters it will not work okay right let me repeat if you drag this rank function here it will not work only if you drag this rank then it will work okay. right? because we have added that uh, specific dimension clause in this correct we have customized our table calculation so specific this calculation need to be dragged onto filters in order to achieve required task right i can show you if i drag this rank here you will see all starting from 1 to 50 or 49 right this is the default ranking which that function did what we created it's not the ranking based on our table calculation if we want to filter basis this calculation wherein ranking is starting on each region we need to drag this field by i'll hold control and drag this and then you will see ranks maximum at 14 and over here you can select top five if you want And here is your view for each region top five states by profit okay right? now i have a question here mm -hmm. you created a calculated uh, field for rank mm -hmm. which says it is the default mm -hmm. so rather than creating a calculated field if uh, on sum of profit only if i've added that uh, particular rank and then converted uh, that uh, uh, to specific dimension would wouldn't that have work, worked i believe it could it, it it would have worked we can try that approach also right okay. we can try that right so just one more thing here because okay. this rank is not required i mean you know like it these are top five mm -hmm. so this field need not to be shown right so mm -hmm. you can hide that field how exclude exclude um right. i don't have that option exclude exclude comes only for a particular record see okay okay, okay. it doesn't come for a complete column
what happens if I do hide uh, field label for a row? It will hide this this label rank okay. two. Okay. Okay. So we completely need to kind of hide this column, and for that you already have a function called show header. Right. Okay. It will hide that complete column. So this was the view which we were expecting. Now, yes, by following your your approach of you know parameter and uh, dynamic set, we can make it more flexible because right now it is fixed on top five, right? Mm. We can make it dynamic so that whatever user selects, they can see top six, top two, or whatever they want by region. Right? Even yeah. by using dynamic dimensions. We can right now we have done it based out of region. We can do it by segment also or categories also. Yes. Any dimension. So a lot of customization is possible. Okay, so for now I'll just go ahead and exclude this. Okay, you had some questions on these parameters? How to hide and show two charts in two dashboard? Yeah, yeah. So well, we have created both the dashboard. We also created a parameter for it. So how how it is working uh, in a calculated field? I have uh, no, just if you can just give me a quick refresher, that will do. Not to get into detail, but a quick refresh. Yeah. Okay, so what we did on this particular sheets, we have created this parameter basically group or Pareto. And uh, under this, I mean, you have, I have taken string and we have given two values group and Pareto, right? Mm -hmm. Now, going back to our calculated field, we have written if our parameter has a value of Pareto, then show Pareto or else show group. Simple calculation, yes, yes. one liners, nothing else. And what we did over here, we have dragged that same filter field. And in case we have selected Pareto here, I'll make sure that Pareto is selected in this particular sheet. Right. But but why Pareto and, uh, and the other one group didn't come here? Why only one field came here? Because I have Pareto selected in the parameter, right? Okay, okay, okay. So it is working. My calculated, on... my calculated field says, if it has Pareto, then show Pareto. Otherwise, show group. Okay. 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 If I if I selected group, then you will see group over here. You will not see Pareto. Okay. So it is working right. on uh, parameter basis. Right. OK, and because for this particular sheet, I have not selected group. So group is unchecked. Pareto was selected, but Pareto is not there anymore. So that's why the sheet doesn't appear. Mm. Right. And at this moment, this, this condition is suitable for groups. That's why groups are you know visible here. Mm. As soon as we do Pareto, situation will be opposite and this will not show up. Got it, got it. My confusion right. was on that filter part only. Okay. All right, fair enough. So, so Darshan, did you read about uh, box and whiskers or basically central tendency? Yeah, I read a little bit. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. it's identifying the central position within the set of data. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there are like three fields in that, like mean, median, and uh, mode. Mm -hmm. Mean is being calculated by some formula, and I yeah. x is equal to sigma divided by u, uh, and the median is actually uh, select the central, uh, this one. If we have 10 numbers, Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it will be selecting mm -hmm. the middle uh, set of data. 
and right. mood is the highest uh, bar or the histogram bar chart which you can use after the test of but why highest mm. what is the logic i mean why we take highest Uh, just shared a basic. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Okay, so again, I mean, I would not say like go into that technical because you mentioned for mean you need some sigma and all, right? Mm -hmm. Don't go into that right now. Mm -hmm. Mean is nothing but similar to your average, mm -hmm. right? And what is average? Total divided by number of elements. Right. So sum of you know you can add all the elements and then divide by the number of elements. That is what your average is. Okay. Right. I mean it's a simple average. You can do it in Excel, Tableau, anywhere. Right. So that average is similarly called as mean. There is no difference between mean and average. Okay. Right. Now in statistics there is a concept of trimmed mean right or trimmed average you can say so basically uh, let me just show one thing um, I'll create one scatter plot here so I have sales will take profit right and then I'll just drag few components, maybe states only. Let's say state, and I will drag it on shapes. Uh, let's drag it on circle. Okay, so over here, if you see, let me put it by profit. color by state okay so in this particular chart what we are representing is on x axis we have profit on y axis we have you know sales and these are the different states representing uh, the volume in this particular I mean between x and y right a scatter plot is generally shown to show the distribution right of two measures here that for this particular state my sales and profit lies here for this particular state my sales and profit lies here and there would be you know many states which are below zero right so at this level if you see there could be some i mean i don't have anything with the zero sales or negative sales but i have number of states with negative profit these many states have the negative profit are you able to identify why negative profit how i'm telling that it is negative because of axis right Dashan, is it clear yes sir. right because it is you know uh, yes, uh, uh, right below zero that's why anything which lies here will be negative now over here i mean you can say like this particular state taxes it has I mean, I would say in terms of sales, it is doing very good, right? If you see beyond this, you have only New York and California in terms of sales. I don't see any state as higher as this, except these two in terms of sales. But still, in terms of profit, it's most negative. Isn't it? right you can identify is it the regular pattern or it happened just in a particular year or uh, something like that for that you can drag your year i'm looking for a sales date if we have any ship date we have order date we have i don't know if we have a sales date or not but let's drag it
Okay, so now if you see here, I think this is the last year only when we are getting taxes here. Okay, I think it's here also. No. Okay, it's on the negative side only. Okay, so it's a regular pattern, which means, right? That it's always on the negative side. And California and New York are, are at the top. But yes, if you see the pattern in 2016, our New York and uh, California was here below the 100K sales. Then simultaneously, as we are going towards, you know, 2017, 18, it's going up. And they have broken the records in 2019, right? It has gone near 150K sales. So that is what you can see the trend of, you know, it's not a trend, I would say, but you can see the pattern in the scatter plot that how your sales and profit is behaving, you know, between different states. So that's one. But looking at this chart, if I ask you, what are my outliers? Right. Question is outlier. Outlier is something which is either doing, you know, outlier means any element which is doing very different from rest of the data. Okay. Which is behaving right very different from the data. So. I can see uh, only these two. They have been always on higher side. Right and my most of the crowd lies between this. But one question here, looking at this data, if I say that these are my outliers and I remove it, I'll be losing my actual data, most of the data, because it includes your most of the sales. It includes your most of the profit. Getting? So maybe this will not be a right scenario wherein we go ahead and exclude this. We cannot or we should not because we have only 50 observation, 49 observations. And out of those 49, if we remove these two, which includes or which has the maximum influence on data, it will kind of, you know, give a wrong picture, right? But yes, in case if you start working on the RCA of, you know, poor performance, then you can uh, exclude these. Are you getting the context what I'm speaking? If you need if you need to work on the RCA, like you need to find out the reasons of poor performance, I think then only you need to focus on these states which I have selected now. You can exclude those two. Are you guys with me? Yes, yes. Right. So in that case, let's say if I'm focusing on poor performance. I can exclude these because these are related to my outliers, right? They doesn't fall into poor performance. So I can exclude these things. You can filter it out and it will be kind of removed from the complete data. But at this moment, I'm just doing it one by one. So, right, I can even do for Washington also. Because, um, I mean, for other years, it was kind of. Where is Washington? Just below okay, yes, yes, yes. It has been generally doing, you know, better. In 2019, it has seen very good progress right so as of now now if you but, see like uh, i have just removed is yeah. it good to remove it from one year and keep it in no 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 year? from 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 all okay. we need to remove it from all okay i think we can still keep it rather than removing because i mean most of the years it's being part of that cluster only right right yeah, I mean, it depends your uh, the kind of analysis you are doing. You can definitely remove or you can keep. 
right but over here what i really wanted to show like as soon as i have removed those outliers earlier our chart was like everything was very dense at this particular point but as soon as we have removed those outliers now we can see everything in little more detail we can see different other states right and definitely uh now we can focus a little bit more we can see like our focus area should be at this point here right? yeah the negative ones are very poor performing states right so this is how you can maybe i mean play with your scatter plot right i forgot that what actual motto i had in order to show this is scatter plot yes trimmed trimmed mean no trimmed okay. mean that is what i was going to talk about right so basically after removing my outliers now you can better analyze the remaining data so over here if i try to find out the average of all these states right that will not be the actual average or it will not be the actual mean because i have removed some of my elements here right if you want to show you can see what we have removed whatever we have you know kind of see in terms of california force it shows by month sorry by years so whatever we have excluded there everything will be here in this particular filter so after removing my outlier we can you know definitely do the analysis but this will not be the actual mean what we calculate here right so darshan going back to this box and whiskers mm -hmm. right it will show the distribution of your data very well the way you explained right it will show you the mean it will show the median it will show the mode right with that it will show you the quartiles also right in any data you can find four quartiles now so mean quartile, yeah, yeah i'll come to that once i'll plot it then i'll tell you that what is quartile so one by one very first thing what is mean right so as i said that mean is nothing but it's same as your average so you can find out average using mathematical formula like sum of all the elements divided by number of elements that will be your average median is going to be the central point of your data right okay what is mode mode is related to your question i mean the another point wherein you said that anything which will have the highest bar in histogram will be known as mode mm -hmm. so my my question is that only why the highest bar why actually we are saying that highest bar what is mode what it represents out of, out of data mm -hmm. the highest uh... Peak or highest stage, something like that, or highest profit, you can think of it. A cluster with highest number of values. Yes, but tell me in very simple language. I mean, clusters of highest number in values. Uh, in layman terms, how would you define? It's not wrong what you're telling. It's hundred percent right, right? But in a layman term. what will you see let's say if i ask you i have quantity field here right i'll just create another quantity field tell me how how will you define that what is mode of this data i have quantity here let me convert this into discrete i'll drag it here okay so i have 1 2 3 4 these values in quantity what should i do in order to know that what is my mode mm 
to see uh, how, many, how much quantity it has, like 20, it's 14. How much quantity? Mm -hmm. Quantity mm -hmm. is already, right? This is quantity only, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 14. These are quantities. Mm -hmm. But in order to define our mode, what should I do? Anup, what should we do in order to get the mode of this data? You can see the highest two elements like protein or the quantity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're saying like this is the highest value, mm -hmm. is it going to be the is it going to be the mode? Yes. What do you say, Anup? Is it correct? Mm. No, I'm not sure because mode concept uh, mm -hmm. is no, no, probably I don't have an answer for it. Okay, no worries. So, Darshan, I'll yeah. go to your statement now. You mm -hmm. said the highest bar in histogram is the mode of data, mm -hmm. right? How mm -hmm. can we convert this into histogram? First of all, tell me that. If we do, if, if you are able to do that histogram, we'll know whether 14, what you are saying is correct answer or not. Right? Mm -hmm. How should we do that? Mm. You can put any uh, dimension. Right now, this is dimension only. Right? I converted this in dimensions. Create a bin. Bin out of this. Let's say bins. Okay. Now, what should be the size? Should we keep this only? Should we change it to one? One one. Right. Okay. Fine. My bin is ready. So I'll remove this. We'll take bins. So 14. Now, what do I need to drag next? The quantity at my profit. Okay. Let's drag quantity only. Okay. I'll I'll mm -hmm. come to the point why. I'll drag quantity over here and at the place of sum, I will take count. Right? And this is already in order. Let me show labels. Right? Now, if I ask you what is the mode, what will be your answers? Three. Right. So mode will be three. Okay. Anup, why I said that tell me the answer in layman terms? Because that will define the easiness or concept. Mode okay. is the mode is the element of your data with the maximum frequency. Hmm. Right. Maximum frequency means with maximum occurrence. Hmm. Right. Over here, I mean, we have created bin. For this purpose only, I converted this into dimension because if you drag it here, you will again get 14, 1 to 14. Okay. okay. Right. And we have taken count of quantities. So basically, how many times one appeared, how many times two appeared, how many times three appeared? So this is the frequency or occurrence of different quantity in the data. So there is no formula for mode or it just no. uh, highest. No, uh, no. Okay. You can take the count 
count of individual elements whichever element has the maximum frequency or occurrence or count that will be the mode of your data okay right so over here is three is the mode of your data because it has the maximum frequency right we can have two modes we can have two. Okay. yeah right now because it has the maximum count that's why it is the highest bar in the histogram getting my point mm -hmm. yeah. right so that's why darshan to your sentence you said that the maximum or highest bar in the histogram will be the mode so that is also true but you need to know that how to explain that right why we call it fine so this is i mean this was possible in case of bins wherein we created bin size of one if i have a different bin size then what will be the scenario so what i'm trying to say is let's say i go ahead and edit this bin i'll create size of size of three and then i'll drag it here so this time I have only um, 0 to 2 or 3 to 5, those type of bins, right? So mm -hmm. over here, my mod will be C. Again, it's coming to 3 only, right? Mm -hmm. But this, this time, it's not individual element. This is a bucket. This is a range, right? So this time you will say, your most of the elements or most of the products are being sold between three to five a quantity. Because this range specifies your three to five bucket. Right? So most of the products are big, uh, getting sold uh, from three to five quantity. So if you focus on this, Again, you can optimize your business well. But again, I mean, we need to see this profit also. Are you really making profit onto this category or not? Yes, we are. See? It's thrice off, you know, the second highest. So, I mean, this type of analysis you can do. Uh, it is not necessary that quantity comes with quality. Quantity, higher quality can have a less profit also. Right? So, you need to see, do the segmentation of your data, create different buckets. Then you can see, okay, which segment you need to more focus on. Right? Statistics helps you in those terms. Right? Generally, I mean, people say that how mathematics and aesthetics is going to help in business. These are the things. I mean, we are at very basic level right now. Mm. Right? As you go deep into statistics, that's why, you know, statistician and actuaries are involved in policy making and, you know, finance domain. So these are the very basic things we are at right now. But as we go deep, there are many more concepts. They will help you out in terms of optimizing business uh finding out the root cause analysis and then kind of moving creating policy new policies do you know actuaries what is act actuarial science what actuarial si science no i don't know whether the way i'm pronouncing it is correct but Actuarial, yeah, actuarial science. Actuarial science is a discipline that applies mathematical and statistical methods to access risk in insurance. Jo bhi, uh, whatever policies we get, right? LIC policies or term policy, all these things, right? Those are based out of some model, statistical models. 
right? Even for GST, taxation, everywhere. These are some models which we have been generated basis statistic, statistical mo methods and models. They are done by specific people who go through study of actuarial science. Right. And there are several exams for it. Number of labels. And it's a very, you know, highly paid job, highly paid job. You will not find actuarial people in every organization. You will not find very few organizations will have these people. Right. And it is nothing but your statistics. And over there, these are the facts only like uh, which are discussed. Right. Again, when I said these are the facts, we are at very, 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 very basic level. Hmm. Right. There is a huge study need to be done on these topics. OK, fine. That was something different from W, but again, it's related because uh, uh, I have one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you also help us find a median of the same data? Yes. So over here only we did count, right? You can go here and you can select median. It will tell you the median. Okay. Okay. But if now, I don't select bins. Yeah, I mean, in any data, you can find it out. It's an aggregation. Right. It's not necessary. I mean, it's not again. It's not been what I've selected. It's my measure. Bin is in column shells. Right. So now going back to our actual question again, box and whiskers. Uh, Anup, I think this is what we uh, concluded uh, concluded with your session, right? With the yeah. new session. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be creating that again here for the session because we have not done it here. Mm -hmm. So what we can take is first of all let's take profit and or maybe let's take quantity only because we have been doing the analysis on quantity only. So we'll take quantity and we'll take order year. We'll go ahead and create box and whiskers. OK, so. Entire view. So if you see the version here, uh, our chart starts from zero and goes up to 21 K, right? Mm -hmm. This is the total population of quantity elements. Mm -hmm. And it is. Yeah, quantity right now. This is in terms of sales. If you convert this into some other, we'll see that there are some changes which will happen here, right? Mm -hmm. Count of quantity. If I do distinct. Yeah, distinct won't help you. So let's let's go ahead with the sum only. So this will basically shows the total elements and what is their distribution. Okay. Right now over here, I think this will be a little confusing because over here, if you see. Let me take something else so that we can explain. Properly. Or uh, in place of year, you can take region. Uh, you can keep year in uh, details. Right. Uh, you can put region on okay. uh, column. No, no, you can keep that. Where you wanted me to put? Details, details. Details. Okay. Fine. So if you look here, this is my quantity. Then we have order years. Order years is in details right now. I don't know how it is going to impact this view. 
okay and then we have sum or profit let's drag the quantity once again okay so the main thing is basis here it is going to bifurcate your elements okay so if you look at it this is the data related to category this is related to furniture and this is related to your technology what happens we have taken two dimensions two kind two kind of dimensions here one is category and one is for years so for each category right it shows the details of years within you know using measure as a quantity sorry qu yeah quantity as a measure so over here if you see uh, in any particular box and whiskers your data starts from this uh, this point and goes up to this point right in any box if you see there are two endpoints mm -hmm right one represents the minimum of your data and second represents the maximum of your data incremental okay, terms of quantity right so again let me do one more thing when i say minimum and maximum what actually it is representing that that you will know if i change this into cross tab So if you see here for 2016, you have three things over here, like furniture, supplies and all. Out of this range, uh, sorry, this is for furniture only. So within this particular uh, furniture 2016, mm, just focus on these elements right now. For furniture, you have four values, right? Out of these four values, what is your minimum? 1623? And maximum is 2437 right so the box which we will create that will represent these four values at this moment most of uh, like all of your values will lie between these two points okay. so over here if you see first element is 1623 and the maximum element is 2437 right all other values will lie between these two so minimum and maximum and then this will be your central point over here that will be nothing but your median right the the place where the color is changing that will be your your median fine now i was talking about the quartile concept you also uh, asked like what is Sorry to interrupt. Can I just go back to cross tab once? Okay. Okay. Got it. Right. Yeah. I, I can show you one more thing. I mean, see, right now, if you see this setup, your data has only four values, right? Mm -hmm. You can make, you can have more values by changing this into this mm -hmm. format right and then you will see that your let me sort it out now maximum is this for furniture and minimum is this mm -hmm. right we can see the same thing over here also by converting this into month now if you see it starts from 23 mm -hmm. goes up to 343 right again in your data you had maximum of 364 but it shows until this point only right so as per tableau whatever analysis it has used this is telling 
that 364 i mean after 343 364 and 394 are outliers for this particular view whatever logic it has used right maybe the difference between two elements will not be as higher as we have here between these two it's almost 20 right 343 uh, this one is 343 and another is 364 almost difference of 20 so maybe that's a reason it is considering that as outlier for this particular box right that logic will not be same for other boxes here each box will have a different different logic in order to identify their outlier right so this is the representation of tableau but yes again i'll go back again to our point what i was discussing that this shows the minimum this shows the maximum right now your maximum concept is wrong here because it has removed the outlier and then it will tell you the maximum outliers it will not include right and then on each box there are four segments one segment is between this lower hinge uh, it's not lower hinge basically um, minimum and this is the lower hinge so between this you will have 25 percent of your elements when i say 25 percent of your elements if you look at this data how many how many okay you have 48 rows right there are 48 rows in this data so how many rows will be represented by 25 percent of your data Twelve, right? <coughs> Total forty-eight, right? So twenty-five will be twelve, right? Okay. Twelve four of twelve four of forty-eight. Yeah. So twelve rows will be represented. Uh, twelve rows will be representing twenty-five percent of your data. So if you go back here, you will have twelve observations from this point till this point 12 observation similarly you will have 12 observations from this point lower hinge and median wherever the color is changing 12 observations here and then another thing from median till this upper hinge again 12 elements and from this to this there would be again you know 12 elements right but is in this scenario that will not be the 100 percent correct because i have two things which are going beyond my maxima so box will box box and whisker plots generally divide your data into four portions and each portion is called a quartile so this is this is 25 percent even first quartile 50 percent will be second quartile 75 percent will be third quartile and the hundred percent data will come within your hundred percent quartile which is fourth quartile right now yeah, how, another so thing how did you divide like it will be you taking 75 percent and this is 25 percent and... yeah that's what i'm telling so anything between this minimum to this lower hinge mm -hmm. right it will have 25 percent of your elements okay right from lower hinge till median again 25 percent elements mm -hmm. from median till upper hinge next 25 elements so if you if you from minimum till here you will have your 75 percent of elements right good and if you go until this it should cover your 100 percent data because it is from lowest to the maximum point yes. right in this scenario there is little exception because of these two outliers mm -hmm. right but this is the common pattern what a box and whisker plots follows right
Okay. Now, uh, Anup, I don't think we discussed about the reason why, you know, the length of this gray and this white is different and what it represents basically. Mm, no, that I could understand because, mm -hmm. because of the, uh, the 17 per 15 percent, 50, 25, 25 percent is on the quantity it is showing. Mm -hmm. But uh, within that uh, quantity, uh, the s aggregation of the quantity is, uh, uh, is what we are calculating. And that's why the area is different for all 25% uh, is what my understanding is. I mean, maybe that is a case here, right? But that's not the actual explanation. Okay. Right. Actual explanation, it completely depends upon the same concept what we had here. Hmm. You remember highest bar? Yeah, we have a kind of frequency. Beans, right. four, four beans we have created there in box plot. Right. Right. It is just because of the frequency or occurrences. Maximum occurrence, maximum height. Mm -hmm. The same, same concept is here. Maximum number of elements. Oh, sorry, more number of elements, more height. That's but the same more, concept. Hmm. More number of elements, but uh, in each of them, we have 25% uh, of elements, right? See, uh, let me again go back to Excel. Uh, I'll explain one thing. Just just a minute, if I uh, go back to uh, that block box and Excel. Mm -hmm. So you meant to say we have... Uh, uh, distribution of 25%, 25% is, is, is in terms of category and within those category, the highest uh, frequency of quantity uh, is, uh, is, is between the median and the lower whisker or say median and the higher whisker. Right. See, we have this scale also here. Hmm. Right. Now, let's say I have my elements starting from this is my 107th point and until median, I have 131. 131. Right. So between 131 and uh, 109, I have my 25% of elements. Right. But hmm. their actual wall value, which lies between, I mean, with respect to this scale that lies here only. Hmm. Right. That's why over here the length is quite, you know, see another in other words, you can say the elements falling under this range here, 109 to 113 are very close to each other. In terms hmm. of volume, they will be 25 percent. But in terms of variation, there is a very less variation in them. Hmm. Right. Whereas if you talk about this particular segment starting between my median and upper hinge, right? It is starts from 131 and it goes up to 208, yeah. right? It's still, I have the same number of elements here. Number is same, but yeah. the variation will be high. Okay. Right? The difference between those will be high. So this depicts, this depicts the other thing, like a standard deviation between these elements will be very less and a standard deviation between these elements will be high. Over here, it will be too high. I mean, see the difference starting from here till here. Right. None of these box and whisker plots represents a normal distribution. No, uh, that will be a wrong statement. I would say a normal distribution. No, this is a kind of distribution. I would not say normal. Uh, okay, yeah, it's not normal distribution. That was correct, right? Uh, uh, sorry, Darshan, you read about the normal distribution, right? 
not normal distribution but about central tendency uh, yeah central tendency okay mm -hmm. so basically uh, central tendency defines the normality of your data okay if if your median mode mean all lie at same point then your data will be called as normal data okay. or a bell curve so bell curve normal data is one on the same thing okay right but in this scenario because this median is not at the central point i mean looking at the appearance it doesn't mm -hmm. come at the central point okay same goes with this it doesn't come at the central point which means mm -hmm. this data is not normal data it is skewed data okay right skewed data means our data is inclined towards one side um okay how should we represent this uh if i go here right i just convert this into and do we have smooth smooth trend okay see in normal uh, bell curve you might have seen like our central position comes at the top i mean how should i show that let me go to google <laughs> normal curve right look at this chart it starts from here in the central position it is the highest and then again goes down right so what happens in this scenario your mean median and mode all lies at this particular thing central position okay. then only it is called a normal distribution but in our case what is happening here right i don't have the maximum this is a mod right it is not coming at the central location mm -hmm. it is on the left side and the same thing you can see here in all the charts our median is towards the left side if i convert this into horizontal right see like this it is coming towards left side only oh, sorry the median is coming on the left side only mm -hmm. this is left side right median is coming towards left side it is left skewed data uh, let me show normal curve with left skewness see it is called positive skewness and your mean median and mode they are going towards left whereas right is called negative skewness and here your mean mode uh, mean mode and median are going towards right whereas in the symmetrical distribution which is normal distribution all three lie at the same point okay right and that is what is the bell curve this is only known as the bell curve mm -hmm. you can hear as bell curve you can hear as normal distribution right this is another depiction left skewness right skewness okay i was wrong here what i was telling as left that is right right your median mode mean mode and median they are towards left side that is a right skewness and if those are going towards right that is left skewness okay mm -hmm. skew means a long tail whereas no skewness will have a central position anup you are getting right yes 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 right so again these will be help this this concepts will help you in in terms of explaining the distribution right over here in our case in our case the long tail is this side right, right. it's a right skewness 
If this tail will come this side, that will be left skewness. So the same thing is same depiction you can see in box and plot also box and viscous plot. If your median is going towards left side, which means you have a long tail this side. That's a right, right skewness. Mm -hmm. So all three are showing the same representation. If I remove this category, you will get one big whisker plot that is also showing the similar kind of thing. You have long tail here and it's a right skewness. So box and viscous plots talks about the normality, central tendency of your data. It depicts your mean, uh, sorry, your median and quartiles. So 25% elements here, other 25% here, other 25% here and remaining 25% here. Okay. Right. Another fact. This chart will not be requested by most of the business users. Okay. Why? A lot of confusion. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it is, most I mean, everybody. Analyst will only go for this. E exactly. Exactly. Yes. People will not, I mean, uh, easily, people cannot un understand it easily. They need some statistical background or some knowledge, then only they'll be able to understand. So most of the business users generally ask for trend, bar charts, pie charts, tables, that only. Yeah. Right, but it is good to know because... What is the ideal uh, use case for such kind of uh, <coughs> chart? <coughs> See, uh, it is used every year in every organization, <laughs> right? When I say every year, Basically, in the appraisal cycles, bell curve is used, right? Okay. Performance evaluation, bell curve. So all HR people, finance people, not finance people, I would say, but HR people who are working for performance evaluation, they use it, right? But for business representation, people generally don't use it. So if you are in HR analytics or maybe towards, um, I don't know whether it is in the sales, but uh, yes, in HR analytics, definitely it will be used. Okay. Right. Okay. Any questions before we kind of move from this topic? Oh, nothing from my. Okay. So out of this. OK, now another question I mean, I will ask. Uh, it will be a simple thing. We created bubble charts also, right? Uh, I don't think we have created it here. But bubble chart and scatter plot, what is the difference? So in order to create bubble chart, we can have profit. Maybe put it, put states on colors, circles. Yeah, this is the bubble chart. What's the difference between scatter plot and bubble chart? And what is the similarity? Both are in circles. That is the similarity. Scatter plot only have a uh, uh, scatter plot have two majors, uh, whereas uh, bubble chart or even tree map will have only one majors right right that's a difference okay right and similarity you can show as both are used for showing the distribution or relation Compared right to any uh, dimension dimension yes so you can use you know two measures here also so that's not the restriction Maybe in order to show some details, right? Or maybe you can put it over here. No, 
on this. Try put it in, in color. Sales. Sales. Uh, and state in uh, column. No, that will not be very helpful. Okay. You can use, you know, more than two measures just to represent, but you cannot, I mean, the size will not be, or maybe the uh, shape will not be defined by those. Shape you can define only uh, with help of only one measure, right? Mm -hmm. But again, both follow the same kind of architecture wherein you show the X and Y axis. Over here, that will be defined only by one uh, one measure, but in scatter plot that is defined by two measures, right? That is must. For scatter plot, two measures are must, but for uh, this bubble chart, only one measure is enough. Okay. Right. Okay. This gives me idea of the word cloud. How can we create word cloud here in W? Or even before that, what is word cloud? Hmm. Word cloud is a text cloud. Uh, yeah. Which you are having uh, probably if I'm putting a state and the state which is having highest number of sales or profit or anything, that particular text of that state will be shown in a bigger size. How to create that? Hmm. I can try it. I have never done that. I can try. Okay. Okay, all right. Tell me, how should we proceed? Mm, you can click on show me. And uh, bubble chart, mouse over. It says one or more dimensions, one or two measures. We are creating a packed bubble chart now. Uh, can you please repeat that? Can, are we creating packed bubble chart now? Uh, we are trying to create word cloud or text cloud, you can say. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, no problem. So before we create that, we need to see that what, see again, all the measures and dimensions cannot be used for that. Right, or in case you create it, maybe it won't look good or it won't have any value. So you need to identify that which field you should use at least for a bubble chart. So first and foremost thing, you need to identify that and then you will create it. Now, let me tell you if there are 50 states over here, which means if I create my bubble, uh, sorry, text chart or word cloud using states, there would be 50 values, right? Do I have that space to show 50 values in the chart? If yes, certainly we can go ahead and do that. Right, but in case, let's say I want to show products, right? It could be a business requirement that show the word cloud of products, wherein I want to show that which product has a good sale and which doesn't have that. So I will have to drag product 
product name. Now, if you see, I have 1850 rows. Will it look good on Word Cloud? Mm. Around 2000 values in Word Cloud. And most of the things will start like this. See the numbers? Xerox 2017, 18, 19, 20. Right? So creating a word cloud for this particular thing will not be that useful. You will end up looking, you know, a very bad chart. So over here, you can remove this and drag. Straight will be good. I mean, you have 50 values. You can take that. Other is than that, you can take. There is no limit as such. Okay. So that's why you know, we need to take that decision by our own. Okay. Over here for subcategories, we have around 17 rows, 17 individual values. We can go with this. We can go with the state, right? 49 values. So that will work properly. Right now, anything what you want to create the word cloud for, you need to drag that onto this text label. Right? So I'll drag states over here. You'll get the text like this. Okay. okay. Now, next thing, as Anoop said, we can show the high sales or maybe color by this. So you, the rest of the things are pretty easy. You can drag it wherever you want. Maybe I want to show the profit. I'll drag it like this, right? It is not the text cloud, actually. It is a rectangle what is got converted into. You need to go to this drop down and select text again. And as soon as you do that, You'll get something like this. Right? It says California has the maximum profit because I dragged profit onto state size. Another one is New York and then maybe Washington or Michigan. Obviously, it is. Different. Different. Looking at size, we are identifying that. It has the highest sales, right? Right, right. So because we have put some of profit onto size, right? So whichever has the highest size will have the highest profit. Okay. Right. See over here, Texas negative. Very small font. Mm -hmm. Right. So I same thing you can. I have a question. Rather than putting uh, state into color, if we put uh, profit into color, that will be a better visualization. Let's try that. So profit, yes. So it will follow this scale over here. And this is this scale. Now the color density also, California or New York, it shows the dark color which means it has the high profit right now because our scale says like if you go towards red or orange that's the negative profit or less profit so same goes with like texas here or illinois pennsylvania tennessee all these other states colorado so this is the color you can you know do the same thing mm. Right. But it's still, I mean, if you see, there are 50 values here. It also looks crowded to me. Right. It looks crowded to me. So if you wish, you can change it to some other fields also, maybe subcategory or other things. So if if in case you want to do that. Right. Categories here. But why only four categories? Okay, categories are four only. Subcategory I was supposed to drag. Yeah, something like this. Right, so copiers 
as their maximum, then maybe accessories, then phones, and similarly other things. So whichever fields you have a good values on, you can you know drag that here and show your word cloud. Okay. Same, maybe you can have order date dragged here. Doesn't look good as of now. No, 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 uh, don't use it like this. This is fine only. With filters, we can use that. Okay, now any can questions? Position. Hmm. position of these things, I believe we should be. Okay, it's not actual label, I guess, because for labels we can change a little bit. No, it's not changing the position, but yes, um, by changing the measures what you drag, it will give you random thing that you can switch. See, by changing the shape, structure, or by putting you know different different measures you can mm -hmm. change their positions or orders but you can't yeah, control exactly. much exactly same fields i have used and i have got different uh, placing of all the text so that's why right I no no that's what i'm saying you cannot manually drag it whatever you know the space or uh, view you are at it will show different different views But you can't kind of you know drag or control it manually. Okay. So it's similar to your bubble chart only. Right? You can have simply at the place of text change it to circles, it will get converted into bubble chart. So as sim I mean both are kind of related. So you can show mm -hmm. like this. Okay, so so far we have bubble, box, and whiskers. We saw trend already. Forecasting we saw, and this also we saw. Okay. Sets we have covered fine. Okay, let's go to. Uh, I don't think Darshan, we have uh, used subtotals and all for a table. I think you showed some sum of totals and all by going to that like analysis option. I think right? uh, uh, from uh, analysis. Yeah, total. Uh, right. In the very first class, we covered a little bit, mm -hmm. so you will be kind of repeating the same thing. But uh, let's let's look at it. So we have kind of let's say order date and I'll drag two measures over here. And we'll take one dimension. Maybe let's take subcategory. Okay, so we have our cross table which says sum of sales and profit and then we have kind of subcategories over here now if i go to analysis and uh, try to do these uh, play between these options which says show row grand totals right so over here, we had two measures, profit and sales. So that's why it shows two columns, one for profit and one for sales. Okay. Right? You will not get a total of, you know, let's say rows is in one column. No, you will not get that. Similarly, for columns, you will get it here. Fine? Mm -hmm. 
with that you have option whether you want to show it at the left side okay. or you can show that similarly the column column totally you want to show at the top basic thing right i'll go ahead and kind of remove it for a moment now now i have a question why my subtotals are disabled at this moment why i don't see the subtotal option enabled when this subtotals comes in pictures if you have category subcategory then it will show subtotal but if you just have category or just have subcategory it will not show right you need a different levels right like hierarchy wise you need a different mm -hmm. levels then only you will get the subtotal option right subtotal means the total at different different levels so as of now i don't have you know any levels into my dimensions that's why it is not showing but as soon as i drag some other dimension for example like this so i have got two levels now first one is a category second one is a subcategory so i can mm -hmm. get the total of these subcategories on this particular category level right then it will make sense if somebody asks what is the total for furniture I need to tell the sum of all these four categories. And that is what we will get using subtotal. So now if you mm -hmm. go here, go to analysis, go to totals, see, add subtotals. Earlier it was disabled. Now it's mm -hmm. coming like this. So as soon as we do that, you can see the total field added here under each category. And you will know the total for this particular category means to enable that sub uh, total you need a category and sub category kind of fields yeah you need a depend uh, dependent uh, not dependent i would say but you need you know kind of multiple um, dimensions so that okay. basis which you can have some grouping okay mm -hmm. it's a kind of hierarchy hierarchy which you can create mm -hmm. right similarly as of now, it shows the to subtotal for a, each category, but it doesn't show the total total, right? Complete total of this table. For that, you can follow the same, I mean, what we did earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's total of furniture, this is total of office supplies, this is total of your complete table. Mm -hmm. Now, Remove subtotal, total using. Now, total using. So don't get confused with total and sum here. Sum, by default, it is showing you the sum. Mm -hmm. Right? You can have totals by average also. Right? Mm -hmm. So these individual values are not changing only thing which just got change is total it is showing you the average of these values right okay same goes with this it's a i mean these are the individual values this is the average of these values right and over here this grand total is the sum of this this and sorry it's again average not sum 8000 2000 and 700 it is 3625 so that is again average so it is changing your subtotals as well as total into average itself you can have minimum maximum those things also so those are self-explanatory now. Okay, automatic will always be total. Okay. Right. Now, within the table, I, I don't think uh, we have discussed earlier. So if you go from this side to this side, left to right, mm -hmm. this behavior is called table across. 
right? Mm -hmm. If you go from top to bottom, it will be called table down, mm -hmm. right? Another thing, at this moment, it's a profit, right? Under profit, mm -hmm. you have four, uh, three segments. One segment is this. Another segment is this. Mm -hmm. And then third segment is this, right? You can see these, these lines, if you see, mm -hmm. right? So each individual segment is called pain. P A N E. Mm -hmm. Right. This is one pain. This is another mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. And this entire table is called table. And if I talk about just one value over here, it is called a cell. Okay. Right. See why I'm covering this. Though we have already used table calculations in ranks and all, but mm -hmm. we were using these concepts there, which we have not kind of discussed. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll show you where is rank. Top five, this one, right? If I go to this rank field, edit table calculation, see, table down. Table down. Table down. Pain cross and down, pain down and across. Right? So these mm -hmm. are the different mechanisms wherein your calculation is done. Now I'll go back again here and you will see if I just add, let's say for profit, if I just go ahead and add table calculation, by default it does difference from table across. Let's do the Let's say running total, right? Running total and using sum. So what will happen if I say table across? I have selected the profit. For profit, it's running total and I'm saying go to table across. So first value, it will get added into second value. Then that is this. It will get added into third value. That is this. It will get added into fourth value. Then that is this. Right, mm -hmm. it's only doing it for some right now. Oh, sorry, profit right now. It is not doing this behavior for sales because I have selected only profit. Right, if I do at the place of a cross, if I do down, it will keep adding these things towards down. Mm -hmm. Right, table across and down. So, first of all, your behavior will be first of all like across and then down. So this will also get added and as you go towards down, this will also get added. Okay. Right? So you can see the behavior that how it is going. These are the different calculations and the way you want your behavior. It is not changing your actual data. It is only changing the calculation and the view of this particular table. That is why it is called table calculation. Okay. Right. So if you want in the complete table, it will do that. If you want a particular pain, it will do that. Cell will show the exact value, right? Uh, maybe I'll just select this one. So if you see here, I've selected cell. It shows 100% all across. Why? Because whatever value I add here, I'm trying to find out percentage out of that only. It will always be 100%. One out of one is hundred percent. But if you change table across means like this. Moving towards your percentage will always be different, different. Down it will be different. Table, right? Table means it's complete table. So the total mm -hmm. of I think the individual values, if you go like this, these, these and this. It's, I believe it's going to be 100%, right? Even same thing, you can add this total here. It will be 100%, mm -hmm. right? So these are the different behaviors and you need to use sometimes, I mean, depending on the requirement. So don't get confused with it. It's uh, sometimes it is very useful.
right any questions till here mm, no all right so tomorrow i mean we'll start directly on dashboards whatever we have created so far we'll start dragging those into dashboards and then we'll see different other options like uh, how to arrange those objects what are the different filters how can we relate uh, different sheets with each other so that behavior we'll see tomorrow okay sure okay. sir can can you share this uh, uh, video recording book yeah yeah I'll, I'll be sharing i'll be sharing both the things okay yeah all right then okay thank see you, you tomorrow yeah. bye bye Thank you.